Hey, Barbie. Can I come to your house today? Sure. I don't have anything big planned, just a giant blowout party with all the Barbies and plant choreography and a bespoke song. You should stop by. So cool. You can find me under the I'm with Rodrigo and Greta, the dream team behind Barbie, and it's so exciting. So uh, my first question for you, you spent the entire day looking at Barbie in IMAX. What are your thoughts just straight off of getting to review the film and on our screens? <laughs> All of my thoughts, I mean, first of all, that it's it sounds and looks incredible. Like, this is the most satisfying way to watch it for me, and it feels like it really gets, you know, inside you. And I, I like the feeling of being, you know, nearly overwhelmed by it. Um, that's exciting. So that, that feels very um, wonderful. But then, obviously, when, when we were sitting together, I feel like all I can, like, you we're looking at what we're like is that right is this you know so we're we're doing our own version of being hypercritical but also then i'm look stand back and i say this looks amazing and you see every single detail so every single including detail. whatever might be a defect that we hadn't even noticed before right but uh i i it, it seems to me like we had always planned to do the movie for imax somehow yes you know yeah. it works so yeah. well on this big screen it it just it it works very well it looks it's about... also the way um with the proportions and the, the sort of format the the way we shot it and and the, the aspect ratio it it, it, may, it has that quality of making her look you know filled screen vertically as a doll which we'd always talked about dolls need vertical space um because they're you know top to bottom but then it also has a quality, even though it's huge, it somehow contains it so it makes it more doll-like. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. It somehow doesn't make it seem like... Uh, it does something strange to the scale. Yeah, there's something about a two-to-one two, two to one aspect ratio that's for the everywhere. We see it that way, but for in, in IMAX it works amazingly. I mean, the moment in the 2001 sequence when you see her and the bang and, and the exactly had to tell in the little girl at the bottom, and on this big screen, you see her like this, and you see the little girl like that. You know, you're actually moving your head around. It was really amazing. Yeah. And also, in the seeing all the details and everything, like things that we've done that are purposefully almost homemade looking, and like in the transportation sequences, like the wires of everything, which in some formats you don't see as well. In this, you can see the wires of the butterflies attached and it makes it um i don't know it's pleasing to me that you can see all the mechanics of it because i want people to see the mechanics <laughs> it's the first time i noticed some of those i know yeah it was amazing. uh one thing i did want to ask both of you is for fans could you explain why they should experience barbie and imax both for fans that have seen the movie but also fans that are kind of this is one of the last chances to see it theatrically well, I mean, it, you know, the whole time we were making it, I kept thinking of, um, you know, I, I mean, it goes back to writing it. There was, um, w there were no movie theaters at the moment. Like people weren't going to the movie theaters. And even when we were prepping, it was like just starting to come back. And I just kept imagining making something so loud, like outrageous and, and so sort of, like, so bananagrams and outlandish that you'd want to be in a room full of people experiencing it together and so I always had this sense of people kind of sitting in the dark and being together on this uh, just totally wild uh, journey and I think that in that bigness it's like this is the, the, the biggest of the big yeah and also, uh, there's something about the combination of it. So, it's so um, larger than life, and then the way the sound and the music goes together. It's like it really is inside you. It's um, what are, it's like um, it's in an eleven, right? Like they say in um, <laughs> um, Spinal Tap, <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's out of the eleven. It's in an eleven. Yes, yeah, they, but not it, literally. <laughs> but, but in metaphorically, it's an eleven. Yeah, it's it's very impactful. I mean, the movie is already, and and yeah, I saw it in the cinema as well in Mexico City actually, and and it was great. But seeing it on this big screen with the sound, mm -hmm. it's a new experience. 
And I, I think that the movie is an experience, but this really takes it to another level. Plus the bonus material. Bonus I mean, material. I mean, oh, bonus I mean, material. So. Bonus material, yeah. Is there any any cryptic tease you can put out there as to what fans should expect with the never-before-seen? Well, yeah. Well, I will say that, I mean, it was the most joyful set I think I've ever ever been around it was a it was the colors it was the it was the you know performers it was rodrigo it was it was like the most wonderful place to be so um i i would say there was this sort of joy that i think you can kind of palpably feel in the movie it was actually there in the shoot so there is some kind of look at that behind the scenes and then also just as as things go in movies, there's just a million little um, diamonds that were not. We didn't. We, we didn't have space for every diamond, so this was also a chance for me to get some some jokes and I'll say fa- I'll say far to opera. <laughs> far to opera. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I, I'm. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, even even when when I saw the film, I was like, oh, I loved it. I loved. Everything about it, but I was like, oh, I remember this thing we did, but of course it didn't fit. But so now there's a chance to see some of those. Yeah, in your mind you're like the fart opera. <laughs> For sure. Very sophisticated. <laughs> you need to see it in IMAX. <laughs> yes, yes. Otherwise the impact. <laughs> Otherwise of... you wouldn't feel it under your seat, and you wouldn't know. Yeah, it's not the same. It wouldn't be funny or dramatic. <laughs> right, right, right. That's the entire pitch, right? There. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, I was sold before you walked in. Um, <laughs> Last question, and this is something we love to ask mm-hmm. our filmmaker friends. You know, this has become kind of a popular question, but if there is any movie you could experience again or for the first time in IMAX for both of you, um, what would come to mind as something you would love to experience again? Well, obviously the one I ripped off, 2001. <laughs> like, they, I mean, like 2001. I mean, that's pretty overwhelming all the time, but yeah. Well, that's a good one for sure. I would say Raging Bull. This is just my favorite movie, and, and I think it's spectacular in every way. And I'd love to see those black and white images in the big screen like that. That would be my choice. It would be amazing. It would be amazing. Thank you both for your time. We really appreciate it. And for sitting down with us. This is amazing. Blade Runner would be good, too. Blade Runner? Blade Runner would be too. Oh, my God. That's a great choice. Yeah. That rain. Yeah. The, that lighting. Three, yeah. Oh, my God. Are you good? I literally like think about this topic in my sleep. Like I try, I wake up, I have a new answer every day. Really? So there's yeah. like it's endless. Yeah. Yeah. Can go. yeah. You'll have a million. I know. <laughs>